This game is still alive, but only just. Kohli goes down the ground. Kohli goes out of the ground. What a twist. Are we seeing a cricket match or what? There he goes. That's the biggest of them all. I'd said at the start of the season when I was talking up on Crickbuzz about the Mumbai Indians and their prospects that if all elements moved in one direction, all the forces, all the elements moved in one direction, then they had every chance of winning it because this is a gun team. It's a beautiful team, lots of great players, but it needed everyone to be moving in one direction. And I said that because they're a new captain and you can see all that's happened around in the last three games. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have felt the need to do this block. I mean, people lose two games. Mumbai Indians themselves have come back from five games lost. But what I saw at the 1K Day Stadium in Game 3, it gave me the feeling that wasn't Mumbai Indians now. And it got me thinking, is there something that we don't see over there? And I thought I would address the situation by looking at it from the point of view of each of the five main personalities or the main actors for want of a better expression in this drama. There are five people involved, five entities involved. First of those obviously is Hardik Pandya. Then there's Rohit Sharma, very popular person. Hardik Pandya, much admired as, as a cricketer. Then there is the management who took the call. Then there are the fans who are such an intrinsic part, not just of the franchise, but of our sport itself. And then there are two others. We don't talk enough about them. Two very proud, outstanding cricketers who might have captaincy ambitions themselves. And that's Surya Kumar Yadav and Jaspreet Bumrah. So let's start with Hardik Pandya. I, can, I don't have a clue about why Hardik Pandya is getting all this negative publicity, all this booing, because he hasn't done anything wrong. Let's, let's imagine we are Hardik Pandya. Okay, you are you're a junior level manager. Someone else gives you a better package, maybe a better designation, more responsibility. You take it, no? Most of us would take it. And then your original company says, but you did very well over there. Now can you come and lead this unit for us? Are you saying no? That's exactly what Hardik Pandya has done. Left the Mumbai Indians. Remember, it wasn't retained, but there were other issues, injury issues, whatever. Left, leaves the Mumbai Indians, goes to the Gujarat Titans, a team that in all fairness, when you looked at it in the first year, very few people thought would actually go on and win it. And he takes them to one title, then people say, can he do it again? He's on the brink of winning it a second time. It's a fantastic display as captain of a franchise. Now he comes back to what was his original home. He's given, he's told, do you want to be captain of Mumbai Indians? So maybe he says, I want to be captain of Mumbai Indians. I'll come back irrespective. We're not privy to that conversation. But we would all do exactly what Hardik Pandya has done. So why are we booing him? Now look at Rohit Sharma. Let's see if that makes a little bit more sense. Rohit Sharma is this much loved much admired, very popular uh, person, very popular leader. Wasn't always like that, by the way. Rohit Sharma has been booed in the past as well. As everybody who's played this game at a certain level has been. But it's just his easygoing nature. He's, he's the kind of person who puts his arm around your shoulder if you're down. Look what Ashwin said about him. Look what Kuldeep said about him. He's, he's a very people's person. And the manner in which India played that ODI World Cup just endeared him to everybody. He's on the biggest high of his career as a person, as a player and as a leader. Now suddenly he's told, you're not captain of Mumbai Indians anymore. Nobody likes to be told I'm not captain. Now I don't know how the message was communicated, but Rohit Sharma would be peeved. That's entirely natural. But you know what? Rohit Sharma has seen more disappointments than most people in life. And so he knows what it is. He'll get a move on. Now the management's point of view. I don't know how many people have looked at it from the management's point of view. Everyone looks at succession planning and they're looking at the Mumbai Indians team over the last three years. They've not been serious contenders for the title. I know they made the playoffs once. Mumbai Indians don't like to lose. They've won five times before that. So they're thinking, right, do we need to move on? Do we need to get a different leader? They're saying, okay, what about Rohit Sharma? Fabulous player for India, fantastic talent, very popular. He's been great for our franchise, but he hasn't had a great IPL for five years, right? This is entirely the management's point of view. It could be. I'm not saying it is. This is the way I look at it. And saying, okay, next year, we don't know what the auction rules are going to be. Suppose they only allow us three retentions. 
Are we going to go Hardik Pandya, Jasprit Bumrah and Surya Kumar Yadav if we had the option? What about Rohit Sharma? He's going to be 40 by the time the next cycle ends. So do we need to now move on? Everyone does that. CEOs are told, look, look, we need to move on. Could they have had the passing of the bait in a little bit where Rohit Sharma is going to exit the next year? So you have Hardik alongside as the captain in waiting. We don't know. We don't know what the conversations were about. But from the management's point of view, Everyone does this succession planning. And you know what? People play under other captains before. Sunil Gavaskar has, Kapil Dev has, Tendulkar has, Saurav Ganguly has. And sometimes they've produced their best performance. It's entirely a part of the game. Virat Kohli is now playing under Rohit Sharma and he's going to play well. So that's the management's point of view. Now, what about the fans? Look, the fans will always watch sport irrationally. That is the nature, that is the emotion of the sport, that is the emotion that accompanies it. When I'm watching a football match and I'm also going, ah, I'm watching it irrationally. It's just part of being in sport. I've spent a lifetime in sport. I know how people are irrational. As a broadcaster, I know I've got to be rational, but I know that the people watching and listening to what I'm saying are necessarily viewing it from the point of view of their franchise, from one side. And so it's it's, it's, it's part of that. So the fans will express their point of view. Uh, sometimes they love you very much. Sometimes they won't love you. It's the nature of the beast. What I do not like from the fa- about looking at it from the fans' point of view or indeed addressing the fans is what's happening on social media at the moment. Now, it's, it's a violent, ugly, stinky cesspool at the moment. And it's not a happy place. The problem is that everyone is reading what other people are saying and it's adding to their ill will. So all I will tell all the actors in this drama, do not see what is being said on social media. I tell that to every young player. But it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. I mean, I, I, I have learned to do it, but I'm much older and I've learned after, after a lot of experience. So that is from the fans' point of view, but the fans are at the very heart and soul of our game. You've got to look after the fans. Now, what about... Bumra and, and Surya Kumar Yadav. Surya Kumar Yadav has been captain of Mumbai before. Given the kind of person he was, as noticed by Gautam Gambhir, they made him vice captain of Kolkata Knight Riders very early. He would have said, look, I love Rohit. If not Rohit, why not me? And just with Bumra, I would have had exactly the same situation. I've been captain of India in a test match. I'm this very cerebral bowler. I read the game well. I'm at the height of my powers. Why not me? So they are unhappy. Now, put all these things in perspective, you still got to ensure that your side wins. How would they have done it? Look, I've not been a manager in this situation. But what I do know of people is this. Rohit Sharma likes love. Rohit Sharma is a simple person who radiates love. He wants love himself. I don't know if this was communicated to Rohit Sharma that way. Hardik Pandya is ambitious. You know that the moment he says, I want captaincy, you say, yes, he's going to be in that role. Can you, put, have you, can you put your arm around Jaspreet Bumrah and Surya Kumar Yadav and explain to them? Maybe once you get to know them better, we talk about understanding the whole person, understand what works for them. The easiest decisions to take are the decisions you don't have to take. But Mumbai Indians at the moment have to find a way where even if people are unhappy with each other, you cross the line and there is respect. That's what all the great players tell you. When you cross the line, is there respect? Do you play for each other? don't have to go out for dinner with each other. And that is going to be the key to the Mumbai, to Mumbai Indians' progress in the rest of this tournament. Is there going to be respect for each other as professionals? And is there a wider goal that they're all part of? And that is what the management decision will be. At the moment, it's not going in one flow. Waters are just going everywhere. They're flooding the banks. They can just raise the banks, come back. I still think this is a side that's very good, but it's going to be the side to watch out for from here, from a cricketing perspective, from a human perspective, and from a management perspective. So thank you for watching and do subscribe to this channel.